12.5 million new cases of cancer have been diagnosed worldwide in 2011. Approximately 5 million of them are viral cancers, cancers that were caused by viruses. Most of us are not aware that viruses are responsible for 40% of all cancers worldwide. Viruses appear to be the second most important risk factor for cancer development in humans, exceeded only by tobacco usage. These cancers can be prevented through vaccination, diagnosed with a simple blood test, and treated with less toxic antiviral compounds. There are a broad range of cancers out there, and the, the fact is, a lot of people don't understand how cancer is really caused. I mean, there's a lot of research that's out there, and uh, viral cancer is just as important as any other type of cancer or how you can catch it. This foundation is scratching the tip, and, and, it, and it keeps moving forward with, uh, and making progress on eventually finding a cure for, for all types of cancers. It has touched most of us. Someone you love has cancer. My father had gotten lung cancer, and um, one, he didn't take the news well at all. And secondly, he had to undergo some traumatic and very difficult radiation treatment, and then the chemotherapy afterwards, and made him very ill, very sick, very uncomfortable. Um, it's very invasive to his life. It was uh, very difficult for the family members to see him undergo such a dramatic and traumatic invasive treatments. What if you found out there is a potential cure, but it might never be available? That would be frustrating. That would be very frustrating. Knowing that there is a cure available and I don't have access to it or a family member that I, that you know, one of my loved ones didn't have access to, it, uh, that would be very frustrating. Looking to the future, you know, how we know what we know now, there are much, much more effective ways of treating that, that he wouldn't have had to suffer so and endure the pain that he did endure. Here is the challenge. In university laboratories across the country, promising treatments and medicines are being discovered every day. Based on the animal study, it was 100% cure for animals, but it was not translated to the humans, and that translation would cost at least $2 million in order to prove it. The journey for a new potential cure from the lab to the pharmacy is a very long and costly process. It takes many years and many millions of dollars in order to commercialize them. Uh, the technology should obviously work in patients and very often the technologies at early stage are tested only in animal models. So it takes time and money to generate what we call proof of concept studies in human subjects. After that, you have to you have to receive some funding and support in order to apply to Food and Drug Administration clearance because without regulatory approval you cannot use it in patients in the United States. And only after that the large organizations, commercial entities become really interested in your technologies. Without a committed interest from a strong commercial partner, new potential cures can get stuck in a university for many, many years and may never come out into the public. As you know, most technologies are patent protected and the patents, they don't last forever. The usual patent life is 20 years. So out of this time, you have only a very limited period of time remaining in order to commercialize these technologies. Dr. Samarin is on the Board of Advisors for the Viral Cancer Research Foundation. He searches for new potential cures that need funding to get out of the university intellectual property departments and start moving towards the marketplace. The ultimate goal is to find these promising technologies, help to develop them, and then handle it to large pharmaceutical companies and medical device companies so they would uh, they would create new products and these products would save lives. The Viral Cancer Research Foundation was started two years ago. The mission of the foundation has two equally critical components. One, to create awareness of viral cancers and two, to support the new, less toxic and safer potential cures that are in the final stages of development. 
and require initial clinical trials before they can move into the U.S. marketplace and become available to cancer patients. We want to provide the help on the first stage of clinical study where technology is already developed and patented and need some funding for initial clinical trials to show the proof that technology would be attractive to the market. Dr. Marina Pestova is the president and founder of the Viral Cancer Research Foundation and is a research specialist in plant-based medicine and immunology. Dr. Pestova knows firsthand the human cost of this long process. She lost her father to viral cancer. Her response is the creation of the Viral Cancer Research Foundation. One of our main missions, of course, is to generate more support, generate funding for important research. And you know, I'm sure almost everybody has been touched by cancer, They've had a family member, friend, who's had cancer. And there are a lot of new promising cures out there, but don't ever see the light of day because of lack of funding. The money from donors is targeted to one very strategic bullseye, getting the promising technologies and drugs through the first clinical trials. This is what creates the results the drug companies need to see to convince them to invest in taking the cure to the public. First time you get the words that you have cancer, it's a, it's a little shocking. Um, you, there's a lot of things that, that run through your head, um, your job, your family, uh, just life in general. And you have to kind of get a grip, get focused, and all right, and, and you have to move on to the next step. The idea is you can sit around and, and, and let cancer beat you, or you can give it a fight. And uh, I chose to fight, so. John Parker is a two-time cancer survivor. He is very passionate about his family and the thousands of people who need, as John did, new, less toxic and safer potential cures to have them come out of the laboratory and to start saving human lives. As a member of the advisory board, um, I felt compelled to become part of this once I was asked to, to join this organization. Again, going back to my personal story, my family's history, uh, seeing that there are alternatives, that there are cures that are ready to be unlocked, but there's no money to unlock them and bring them to market. It, it's, it's hard not to be involved and ask people to help and help market and spread the word at a grassroots level to, to bring this to everyone's mindset because many people don't realize how preventable some of these cancers really could be and are given the education and um, knowledge that we currently have.